Hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the um, contrast protect technology and we're going to show you how everything really works. So first, the installation is really easy to install. So you have your application, application stack, you have the custom code libraries and all that. And then you uh, will have the dashboard. So from there you can download the um, agent and you can place it alongside the application. The way you can do to add it is basically just add a, a Java agent setting to the JVM. And once you do that, it actually will place few sensors inside the app. And think about these sensors like a set of security cameras you would have inside your building. So you can have uh, dangerous um, people go through your building and you can watch them through different security cameras. And when you're seeing that they're accessing the safe room or whatnot, you can go ahead and block them. We work the exact same way, but we work inside the application. Once we find different attacks, we are able to block these attacks and send notifications over to the dashboard, but we're also able to send these notifications over to SIM tools and syslog and so forth. Now, how does this really work? So we said we have the different sensors right here. In pre-production assessment, um, this is not the scope of this conversation, but we utilize these same sensors, but we focus on uh, normal traffic. In production applications, we focus on the dangerous requests that are going through the application. And using these sensors, when we notice that the, uh, the requests are trying to change the meaning of the query, that's when we go ahead and block it right before it accesses the database. This is something that's different from a web application firewall because the web application firewall is going to be blocking attacks based solely on HTTP requests or HTTP traffic. Contrast agent is going to be able to see what's inside the app. That really helps with SQL injection, vulnerabilities, command injection, and even untrusted deserialization attacks and all that. Now, let's go ahead and show you how things um, uh, will look. This is a dashboard. As soon as you log in here, you're going to be able to add the agent, as I mentioned. You can see a quick snapshot of the whole organization. So assuming you onboarded around uh, 47 servers and so forth, you can see the different attacks. You can see the vulnerabilities. If you click on uh, the vulnerabilities tab here, you can see a total um, uh, list of vulnerabilities that you have inside your organization. You can also see uh, the total number of libraries that you have and so forth. But let's go um, in the attacks piece. So here, by default, we can see what different attacks are happening now. But if I focus on the last 30 days, I'm going to be able to see uh, all the different attackers, what IP address they have and all that, the different attack events. And we can also see the different attack target applications. Whatever is green shows that these attacks um, have been blocked and whatever is um, uh, whatever is uh, um, uh, red, we will see that these attacks have actually have been exploited. And whatever is gray here, that means that these are probed events that we did not do anything about because they looked suspicious, but they could not um, uh, exploit any vulnerability that's already in the app. Let's go in more details now. So when I go here, I'm able to first uh, filter by the different um, results. So I can say, hey, um, show me all uh, the attacks that happened, whether they have been um, effective or not. I can filter by the probed events, for example. So this one, for example, this is a dangerous attack that didn't lead anywhere because there was no SQL injection that specific page. If I go to the blocked attacks, for example, I could see the different um, uh, attacks have been blocked, what the application was, what the server is, and all that. When I click on, uh, I can filter on, for example, the SQL injection attack, and I can go ahead and click on one of these um, applications. I can see the logged in username, I can see the IP, I could see how the request came in, and how that specific attack vector came about in the SQL um, query. In the end, of course, we will show you that the fact that we blocked the attack and so forth, we can see more information on that. Let me go ahead now and show you a real attack and how uh, it will look. To do this, I'm going to go to a different uh, dashboard here and let's um, go ahead and and um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and start the um, WebGoat application. 
and when I go ahead and just go ahead and sign in, so this is a, a an application that's actually already been onboarded uh, with our agent. So when I just go ahead and sign in, the agent already knows who's logged in and so forth. I can go ahead and click on the insecure deserialization page here and we can go to this uh, specific page. I can go ahead and just copy uh, a serialized object that I already have. And all I can do now, I literally just go ahead and, and paste it here. Okay, so this application takes that serialized object, does something with it. So when I go ahead and click on submit here, look what happened. It went ahead and opened the calculator app. Let me go ahead and do it again. Just go ahead and click on submit. It went ahead and opened the calculator app. This happened because that serialized object got deserialized by the application. And when it got deserialized, it became a command. And that command actually ended up opening the, um, uh, the calculator. Let me go ahead and try it again here. This is pretty dangerous because imagine that serialized object was actually downloading a malware and installing it on the server. Let me go back now to the server. And then we can go to the dashboard now. We can go to the um, um, attacks piece here, for example, and we will see that we are actually, there's an attack event that we already have. Uh, for example, for this one, let me just go ahead and refresh. We can see that there's an attack happening right now. I can click on that specific event. I could see that, hey, this is the logged in user. This is the IP address. This is uh, the post event. This is how it actually ended up in the um, uh, operating system. This is a, um, another request, actually the same request, but you could see here that how it's trying to open the calculator app. Let me go ahead now and change the protection rule and we can enable the block here, so I can just go ahead and enable block for all of them just to confirm that everything is uh, running properly. So um, I'm able to go ahead and enable block, but we can go in more details now. So you could see um, the end command that um, was uh, opening the calculator app and all that. You can click on more details. You could see the full stack trace on anything that happens on that specific attack. You could see the request. Uh, uh, command and finally uh, you can participate in the discussion and anything you do here you could easily receive notifications you could see here that I just received a notification telling me that someone made an attack um, I can add an exclusion to that specific attack I can suppress that event I can blacklist that IP I can whitelist that specific IP as well um, I can also create a virtual patch for that specific Attack. So let's go back to the web code application now and let's do the same thing that we did earlier. Let's go ahead and submit that same serialized object. And then we can see how that uh, thing um, is going to look. So to do this, I'm just going to go here, submit the same thing. So remember before we used to have the calculator open, now nothing. Can go ahead and submit it again. Submit it again, I can submit it all the time. And what happens is the contrast agent automatically recognizes that untrusted deserialization or untrusted object got deserialized inside the app. And then uh, when it noticed that it's trying to access something in the operating system or whatnot, it went ahead and and blocked that specific attack. So when I go ahead and refresh uh, my page, I'm going to be able to uh, see uh, that actually that attack being blocked. Okay, so here you could see that that um, attack, same something similar. Uh, we saw that the IP um, logged in user, the fact that we went ahead and blocked that attack. Not only are we able to block attacks, but we're also able to um, Go back here. We are able to uh, uh, do log enhancers. So this is another feature that's really helpful for uh, a lot of our customers where they're able to um, uh, save into the logs any API call that happens inside the app. Thank you so much.